now if your your version of sketchup is freshly installed this is basically what you are going to see you are going to see this uh, stuff pop up the first thing you need to do is see over here you need to choose the kind of templates you you are going to be using if I click on this you see this template opens here you have simple template feet and inches you have simple template meters architectural design template feet and inches architectural design template millimeters architectural design meters uh, when we scroll down we we'll see orders construction documentation construction documentation meters millimeters and all of that but for what I usually do basically is I use architectural design meters that is this one so I click on it and I say start using SketchUp you get basically that is that as soon as I click on that it pops up you can see my SketchUp Pro 2016 has opened uh, when you have some Ruby Ruby uh, extensions and all of that installed, you see this pop up. You just OK it so that you have that go away and also OK here again. Now this is our basic interface for SketchUp. Whatever version of SketchUp you are using, either it's the earlier versions like 2008, 2007, 2006, 5. All the higher versions 2010, 11, 12, 13, 14, to even uh, the current ones 17, 18, all the ones that are going to come out next year. This is basically what you are going to see. These are the basic tools you are going to have. And I tell people a lot of time if you have an understanding of these basic tools, I think you can do virtually everything you need to do in SketchUp. Of course, it will take you a little bit of time. As against when you have extensions and plugins and all of that but with these basic tools you should be able to do virtually everything you need to do in SketchUp so I'm going to try to explain these tools one by one at least the most important ones then from there I'll try to show you what they do and all of that then we'll proceed from there like I said this is an introduction to SketchUp so I'm not going to go deep into a lot of these things I'm just going to explain the tools and show you what they do now to start with i would like to start with um our line tool for as designers and even uh let me say as designers basically there's virtually nothing you are going to be doing that you will not start with lines so i'm going to start with that you see this tool over here uh that looks like a pencil that is actually your line tool so you can see as when you click on it it comes up lines again so when I click on it, I've picked the tool. You can see the pencil is going wherever I move my mouse button to, the pencil goes. Now, I want us to understand that we are actually in a 3D space. This is not a 2D software, it is a 3D software. So I want, first and foremost, I want us to understand what it means to be in a 3D space. Now, a 3D space means you have your length, your breadth and your depth that is basically what 3d means you can see I said we have length we have the breadth and the depth or the height or whatever you want to call that as against a 2d space where you basically have length and breadth in 3d you have three dimensions that's why it is called 3d now if you look closely at this space you see we have green a green line going this way we have a red line going this way and we have a blue line going this way those are the three dimensions we have in SketchUp everything we are going to be drawing whatever designs we are going to be doing we have to take cognizance of these three dimensions for instance I was talking about my line tool you can see if I try to draw a line along this axis you can see the line is red but as soon as I click the line it turns black that is the actual color of that line but while I was drawing it, you are seeing the red line because it is telling me I'm drawing along the red axis. I don't know if you get that. Let's proceed. Now, you see this? I'm drawing along this axis now. It's showing me the line is green, right? That means this line is going along this axis. It is parallel to this green axis. I click that, it turns black. You see that, right? Then I go this way. You see this line I'm drawing now is blue color. Now that means if it is going along parallel to this blue axis, 
so every line that i draw and you see this blue line at the initial start of the line it means i'm drawing on along the blue axis now we've done that i'm going to press escape to drop my tool uh-huh now i'm going to try to explain what i just did now again now this blue axis that is your only vertical axis you get that is a line that is standing you can see this this line i drew here it's like it's standing right that's your only vertical axis now this green and red those are your two horizontal axes those are axes those are the two lines that are going to be lying horizontally on your 3d space the blue line is the only vertical axis and the green and the red are your two horizontal axis let's get that straight because it's very important it's going to affect virtually everything we are going to be doing here now i'm going to go back to my line tool you can see i can use it to draw different kinds of lines uh you see that you see that you see that uh you see this now let me drop that too now you can see an arrow under the line tool right when I click on it, you can see something called freehand. That's a different type of line tool. If I click on it, what this one does is I can draw a line which is not necessarily going to be a straight line. Like I'm just drawing with my pencil freehand. There's no tool. I'm not using ruler or anything. I can just draw curve, wavy lines or whatever. You can see that, right? I can draw all of this with that freehand tool you get it is also a type of line tool but basically this is used to draw lines without any guides free and curves and all of that so that is that i'm going to escape and i'm going to wipe all of this off so we don't get things mixed up i'm going to um, delete it right now i think i shouldn't have deleted that let me draw um, a line again let me use the normal line to this I'm going to draw a series of lines so I'll use that to explain something as quick as possible I've drawn these lines now yeah let me draw these lines and join them together and escape now I drew these lines right don't concern yourself about the randomness of the lines i'm just trying to explain something so let's not bother about how random the lines are or how they don't make sense now this takes me to the next tool i'm going to try to explain this is my eraser tool right as the name implies i think most of you will know what an eraser is used for if i pick this it's basically used to erase or clean you get for instance i picked my eraser tool right if i click on this line it disappears i've erased it if i click on this line it disappears i have erased it if i click on this it disappears do you notice that the other parts of that line did not erase that is because this line they were crossing at this point let me undo it and show you that the lines were crossing at this point so if i click on one of them only that one is going to disappear it's going to get erased you get so the same thing applies here i click on that it goes away i click on this it also goes away that is that for my erase tool is basically used to wipe off whatever it is i don't want you get so now let's go to my arc tool i can use this to draw different types of arcs you get acts are actually very important designs to do a lot of things doors windows arcways and all of that we use acts and all of that so it's actually very important if you want to draw an arc or a series of acts this is actually what we are going to use when i click on this now this is how my arc tool works i need two points basically to to draw an arc now let's say I pick on this point that is one point and I click on the next point I've gotten two points now the next thing I move out from those points you can see as I move out my arc is being formed I move out my arc is being formed right 
I move out, my arc is being formed. Why well, don't you to notice something as I'm moving out, something is happening down there. You can see here, something is happening over here. It is asking me for the bulge. What does the bulge mean? It means how, how far, how deep do I want the arc to go? That is basically what the bulge means. How deep do I want the arc to go? So what happens is, let's say I want this arc to go like, uh, let's say, uh, 20,000 deep. As soon as I've drawn this, I click, I go on my keyboard and type 20,000. You can see that, right? And enter, as soon as I enter, it resizes to whatever number I type into the space you get. So my arc resizes to whatever uh, bulge I type into the space you get. That's very important. We are going to explain a, uh, a lot of these things later, but I want us to get the basics of how these things work. So that's basically how my arc works. You get. If you click on this arrow over here, you see there are different types of arcs. You get. There are some that requires three points to draw an arc. There are some that requires uh, different types of arcs. You get. So that is that. Now let me come to the next one. Uh, let me come to the next one, which is my rectangle tool. You can see. Let me wipe my arc off first, so we don't get things mixed up. This is my rectangle tool. It's basically, it's you can see when I click, uh, I, 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 my cursor stays over that. It's showing me shapes. What it means is that rectangle is not the only thing that is there. If I click on the arrow, it's going to show me different types of shapes. So, but to start with, what I'm seeing there right now is the rectangle. Sometimes when you open on your own system, you might see a circle basically most of the time you see either a rectangle or a circle for now i am seeing a rectangle so if i click on this rectangle i can use it to draw a rectangle can you see that as i pick one point pick another point i've drawn a rectangle but i also want you to take cognition of what is happening here it is asking me for the dimensions of that rectangle that i've drawn so let's say I'm drawing a rectangle that represents a plot of land 50,000 by 100,000. All I need to do is type 50,000 over here. Is that correct? Yeah, that is 50,000. Comma, that is by 100, 1, 2, 3,000. As soon as I do that, I can enter. You can see it has resized to 50,000 by 100,000. You can see if I take my measuring tool, I'm going to come back to this tool later to measure, it's going to give me that dimension that I typed in. You can see that 50,000, right? You can see it over there, number is highlighted by 100,000. Can you see that? That's beautiful. That is ketchup. So that is how that works. Uh, I'm going to escape that now. I'm going to, yeah, let me drop it. So basically, that's how that works. But like I said earlier on, there are other tools under the shape tools. If I click on this arrow, you can see I have rotated rectangle, I have a circle, I have polygons. Let me pick on the circle so I will explain how it works. When I want to draw a circle, basically what I do is I pick on the circle tool, I click and I pull out. You can see that. I pull out but as we are taught uh let's say in primary school or secondary school or any of that when you are drawing a circle you have to impute the radius of that circle it's not an arbitrary stuff no it's not random you have to impute dimensions we are doing designs designs what separates design from art it's actually precision you have to impute dimensions measurements and all of that so we have just drawn a circle right but down here, it is asking us for the radius of that circle. So we have to give that. So let me escape this. I want to undo this so that I'll explain that properly. Down here, uh, it's asking me for the radius of the circle. So let me say I draw this. I click. I can impute the radius down here. You see that, right? I can impute the radius down here. Let's say I want to draw a circle of radius. 30,000 that's very big right yeah 30,000 mm 
uh, I, all I need to do is on my keyboard type 30,000 one two three right and just enter it resizes to that dimension you get it resizes to that dimension now I'm going to undo that circle because I want to explain something very important that I noticed when I started and I skipped now let's say I want to draw that circle Did you notice as soon as I click the circle there's something here that's it's asking me for sides what comes with SketchUp by default is a circle having 24 sides you get if it's let's say an arc when I click on an arc by default if I draw an arc now it's going to give me an arc with 12 sides but for a circle by default it is giving me the circle with 24 sides what does that mean now it means this circle I am drawing is made of a series of straight lines those straight lines are 24 in number that is for the default by default those straight lines are 24 in number watch this when I zoom in you can see even though from a distance it looks like a perfect circle when I zoom in you can see the actually straight lines that make up that circle you can see that right this is a straight line this are another straight line when I zoom out you see another straight line straight lines those if I count all of those lines they're actually 24 in numbers now what is uh, what does that mean it means for instance if I want a smoother circle all I have to do is to increase the number of line, of sides let's say I increase to 20 200 you can see I just increased to 200 right now if I draw another circle it's going to give me uh, let's undo that let's pick 200 as number of sides and enter now you can see if I draw another circle you can see this is smoother you can't see the not you can't see the straight lines right you can't see the straight lines even if you zoom in so much you can't see the straight lines these circles are kind of like see of similar red, red red eye right but when I zoom in on this you will see the straight lines and mix up the circle by zooming on this one you will not see the straight lines why is that I have 200 straight lines that make up this smooth circle whereas I have just 24 straight lines that mix up this one now that is that now I now move to another interesting tool which is this uh, this one it is called push and pull that is one of the sweetest parts of SketchUp you get push and pull like the name implies you use it to push and pull <laughs> as simple as that that's all you do with that now if I click pick the tool for instance I want to pull this circle up to create a cylinder all I need to do is drag it up you can see that that is all I can push push it back push it out you see how beautiful that it is like I'm playing right but that is actually awesome that's what makes ketchup sweet that's what makes ketchup awesome like you can easily push and pull I tell people a lot of times ketchup is all about push and pull every other thing is kind of like attachment but everything you are going to be creating in SketchUp is basically push and pull now I've pushed I've pulled this circle up to create a cylinder right let's pull this also up to create a cylinder you can see that it's as simple as that let's pull this uh, what they call it let's pull this um, rectangle up to create a box a cube right is it a cube no the sides are not equal so that cannot be a cube now you see that right that is that and at the same time I've pulled it up I can push it inside if I do not want that size you can see that I have pushed it inside to reduce the size I can pull it out to make it longer I can push it inside to reduce it to make it like reduced right that is basically all about push and pull now there's another interesting tool again uh, you see this this is offset this is offset 
what does offset do let's say i want a, a smaller circle inside of this all i need to do is click on the edge and push it inside you can see it is reducing the edge of that circle to give me a smaller circle you get now i've offset this inside i can also offset this all i need to do is just you can see on the surface you have to highlight on the surface you want to offset then drag inside you can offset in or out you can see that in or out so i'm offsetting inside now let's offset this out and see what happens i offset out can you see that that's beautiful now after offsetting let's try to push and pull and see what happens i can pull this up are you seeing what is happening we've already started creating some awesome things right now push this inside can you see that we are we are doing some real cool stuff now let's say i want to create a depression inside of this i push it down can you see that yeah then let me offset this let me offset this and pull it out see we are creating some real awesome stuff in sketchup isn't that beautiful yeah it is now let's say i offset this a little and push it offset it again let's say nice now let's push this one inside pull this out can you see that look at what we are doing yeah that's good that's cool now that is that with offset push and pull now let's go to the next one now this is our move tool what is our move tool used for it's basically used to move something from one place to another you get so to be able to move this let me do something first which i will explain later uh i want to move this from here to here you can see that is basically what our move tool does all i have to do is pick a point click on it and move you can see I can move it to wherever I want it to go to. That is our move to. If I, I group all of these together, I can move them all at once. Move them. The system is hanging, okay. Yeah. So, basically, my move to is just used to move objects about you can see that right yeah so what about this rotate this is my rotate tool as the name implies i can use it to rotate an object you can see just pick a point and rotate look at that closely again pick a point come outside click and rotate that is all that is all you get now what about uh, this other one scale scale as soon as I click on that you can see all of these edges that surround my my object I can scale this in or out you can see I can scale it out of proportion if I pick any of these handles all of these green things you are seeing are handles you can use to scale so I can scale up scale down to make it flat scale it out scale it inside you get I'm scaling can you see that some of these things are still I'm still going to explain them later so that is what my scale does you just pick one of the handles and scale the way you want can you see what I'm doing pick one of the handles pull up out whichever way you want to scale and that is that now this is my tape measure tool what does it do i use it basically to measure for instance let me do something quickly so that we'll measure it if i draw this i can use my measuring tape to measure what is the distance from here to here you can see it's down there it's telling me the dimension that is 16,000 no 161,127 mm you get even over there showing me the distance over here again i measure that is you can see it's telling me the measurement right let's pull this up let's pull this up then try to see if we can measure from here to here that is the height 
you can see it is telling me it is 139,930 mm. That is the height of this box you are seeing. That is what my measuring tape is used for. We use the measuring tape for something else, which I'll explain later. But for now, I just want us to get the basics. Now, I'm going to skip this. This is like to write text or to do dimensions and all of that. I'm going to skip that. We'll talk about it later, but not now. Now, this is your paint bucket. What is your paint bucket used for? It is used for applying colors or textures to you, whatever it is you have modeled. Now, if I click on it, I've clicked on it, right? There's supposed to be a dialog box appearing here for material. Now, my material is, let me change this. Let me change, um, let me pick colors. Now, let me pick pink. If I do this, I can apply materials to this. Can you see that? With my paint bucket and change the color, do this. No, let me undo that. Let me change the color, yeah. So I can do this, you see. The color is changed. It's just used for applying materials. I can apply different materials to whatever it is I'm working on. You get that is that if i want to change it i go here click on this tray it comes back i can change to let me say lining it loads here i can change the color can you see that yeah then this is basically my orbit tool i can use it my orbit tool to look around can you see that to look around my Whatever I think I am modeling, look under it, look on top, look side, ways, and all of that. That is that. Then this, this is my pan tool. Let's say uh, my I've gone out, almost out of the screen. All I can I do is use this tool that looks like my hand, though my hand is not white. Just pick it and move my my model to where i want it to be to focus it on the screen i can move it about you can see that i can move this bar with my hand tool so basically i think all of these uh things that we explained the table what i've explained so far those are the basic tools that i need for modeling and I want to believe that you've gotten, have, you've had uh, some understanding of how these things works. You can practice them then from whatever you've gotten. We can build on that on our subsequent video tutorials. Thank you for watching and hope to see you next time.